What's up guys, this is Tyler Breck from T-Bone MMA. So I'm gonna do every single UFC fighter in three words. I did it for the last pay-per-view and I think it worked out pretty well. I was very happy with, the, with how it went. Before I start though, I should give credit again. This was Colin Coward's idea on Fox Sports 1. He, does, he did it with every single football team, uh, every NFL team, and he also did it with NBA, every NBA team. So I thought I'd do it, take his idea and use it to UFC fighters. And I'm gonna do it every UFC 208 fighter in just three words. So if you haven't watched my last video, I, I'd encourage you to watch it. But if you haven't, this is a pretty good uh, condensed version of it. So if you don't want to watch an hour and a half of footage, I'm going to try to keep this in under 10 minutes. Let's see if I can do it because I, I like to talk a lot. So let's get started. The first fight of the night, UFC Fight Pass Early Prelims. Rick the Gladiator Penn versus Felipe Nover. Felipe Nover, three words, rough UFC record. You know, he's got a record of one win and five losses in the UFC. He's been cut from the cut from the UFC and then re-signed with the UFC. I believe he's gotten like one and two cents. So he, he's looking to turn that around in this fight. He's fighting uh, Rick Glenn. Rick Glenn only has one fight in the UFC, and he lost his UFC de debut. So he's got a gr great record. He's very experienced. He's got 18 wins, four losses, and one draw. So like I said in my last video, if you lose your UFC debut, I, I kind of omit that because I can understand if you lose your pro debut, I understand if you lose to like, you know, Anderson Silva or John Jones, I can omit that. I can understand. But he lost his UFC debut and this is a true test for him. If he can get past Felipe Nover, I'm sure he'll be considered a UFC star eventually. Okay, next fight on the Fight Pass prelims. Ryan LaFlair versus Juan Carnero. 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 Ryan, Ryan LaFlair. Um... Get in the octagon. You know, he's got a great record. Three words that I used to describe him was get in the octagon. He's got a great record of 12 wins and one loss. I believe that one loss was in the UFC. But he's been very inactive. Uh, something where, like, two, or he hasn't fought since December of 2015, I believe. So he needs to get in the octagon if he wants to really compete and get it, get a name for himself. Because he's got a fantastic record. If he can get a couple more wins, I'm sure he'll be very in the very high ranked in the 170 pound rankings but he just needs to get in the octagon and be active juan canero um use your submissions you now he's got a black belt in jiu-jitsu he's finished 43 percent of his 21 victories by submission which is very impressive get him to the ground use your submissions okay moving on to the next fight the headliner on the fight ufc fight pass prelims marcin tibera versus uh justin willis marcin uh, tibera he likes the finish of his 14 win victories, 43% were by knockout, 43% by submission, and only 14% were by decision. So he wants to get in there. He wants to finish the fight quickly. And uh, Justin Willis, three words to describe him, late opponent change. I, I don't know much about him. I, just a couple of days ago, the original fighter, I can't Mark Luis Enrique, Enrique, I think his name was, pulled out of the fight due to some USADA or. Um, no, it was the New York State Athletic Commission. He pulled. They pulled him due to some medical records or something like that. I can't remember. But he's late opponent change. I'm sure he doesn't have a great training camp. It says here that he's 265 pounds, so I'm sure he has to cut weight. So I wonder how that'll affect him, not having a training camp and having to cut weight in that short amount of time. I wonder that how that'll affect him. Um, okay, new, moving on. Marcin type no. Um, the first fight on FS1 prelims, number six ranked Ian McCall versus Jared Brooks. Three words to describe Ian McCall. He drawed Mighty Mouse, which is just an incredible comp accomplishment. He lost to him in the next fight, but even to to tie him is unbelievable because he's the pound for pound greatest currently. Uh, you know, I thought Dominic Cruz was, but that's a different story. But he recently lost. So do currently, Demetrius Johnson is pound for pound the best in the UFC currently, and he drawed him. So that's very that's incredible. And he's facing uh, facing excuse me uh, Jared Brooks. He's a young three words young undefeated flyweight. There is not a whole I, I shouldn't say there's not a whole lot of talent. There's just a killer on the top of the flyweight division uh, in Demetrius jo Mighty Mouse Johnson. So it's good to see some young blood come up. And anytime you have a he's he's 23 years old I believe. And anytime when you have a big donut on your record the, the big zero. It, it, you have to be respected because that's a, a huge accomplishment. Okay, next fight on the FS1 prelims. Nick Lentz versus Islam Mahakovic. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm rough. I'm not very good at names. Nick Lentz, he loves the takedowns. In his 
of his UFC career. I believe he has like 59 takedowns, which is just an insane amount. So he, he wants to take the fight to the ground and probably win by decision. Because 41% of his uh, finishes, or 51% of his victories are by, no, 41% of his victories are by decision. 34% are by knockout, 24% by submission. He's looking for the decision, victory probably. That's my that's my guess. Uh, he's facing Islam Makak Mahakovic, Makakovic, um, Russian Sambo champion. Now I believe he's that's three words: Russian Sambo champion. Ru Sambo is an incredible martial art. I know very little about it. I know Fedor used it, and he was uh, amazing. I know um, Habib Nur Nurmagomedov uses it, and he's amazing too. If you're really good at Sambo, I, you could be just really freaking good. You know, I don't know much about it. That's all I don't know. It works. A lot of throwing. A lot. It's like a combination of judo and jujitsu. I don't know, but it's fun to watch, and I like I like watching it. And it seems like if you're really really high ranked at it, you can compete in the UFC very well. Okay, moving on. Number five ranked Wilson Hayes versus Oka Sasaki. Uh, Oka Sasaki loves the rear naked choke. I'm not sure if that counts as three words. I wrote down, loves the RNC. Or you could just put rear naked choke. Uh, of his 19 wins, I believe we're eight. We're by rear naked choke, which is impressive. Wilson Hayes also loves RNC, rear naked choke. Uh, he had like seven, seven rear naked choke victories, which is incredible. Um, so yeah, both of them are very good on the ground. Wilson Hayes will definitely want to take the ground, to take the fight to the ground and look for a submission. If not, he'll look for a decision victory. Alright, moving on. The headliner on the on the FS1 prelims. I'm going to have to keep hurry it up if I can keep it under 10 minutes. Randy Ruboy Brown versus Bilal. Remember the name Mohammed. Uh, Randy Brown finished 8 of his 9 victories. Or, three words, finished 8 wins. All but one. I could, I could have used that one too. All but one of his victories are by uh, finished. Uh, 56 are by knockout. 33% by submission. Bilal uh, Muhammad. I just wrote down his nickname. Remember the name. You know, I, I like I said before, I watched this guy fight on the Eddie Alvarez versus Rafael Dos Sancho's card, and I he just had an amazing fight against Alan Joban. So rem remember his name if he gets a couple victories. Obviously, remember his name. That's that's his nickname. Remember the name. So yeah, uh, moving on on the main card only on pay per view. Number ten ranked Dustin Poirier versus uh. Uh, Jim Miller, Dustin Poirier, uh, don't get angry. Uh, I, I've noticed in his fights, the last like 10 fights that, he, that he's fought in, he only had like two losses, I believe. One was to Conor McGregor and one was to Michael Johnson. Both of them he hated. He despised of. He hated them so much. And I believe that got in his head a little bit. So if he can keep his emotions in check, I believe that he can win, win over Jim Miller. And it's kind of hard to get mad at Jim Miller. I mean, what kind of beef would they have? Um... For Jim Miller, three words, very important fight. This is a very important fight for him. He's never, I don't think he's ever fought anybody in the rankings. So if he wants to, wants to fight in the rank, or wants to be put in the rankings, he has to get a win over Dustin Poirier. That's a must for him. Gonna have to hurry it up here. Uh, number three ranked Glover Chair versus uh, Jared Knoyer. Knoyer. Um, Glover Teixeira, get back, get on track. Three words, get on track. No, he, he he was on a huge hot streak. I believe it was like seven fight win streak, uh, until until he lost to Anthony Rumble Johnson in 14 seconds. You know, he just ate an uppercut and he got knocked out. Okay, yeah, needs to get back on track. Uh, Jerry Kenoyer, I'm just gonna use his nickname, the Killer Gorilla, because that's an awesome nickname. That's all I'm gonna use. I don't know much about him. Watch that fight. Uh, number three ranked Jacare Souza uh, versus number 13 ranked J Tim Bosch. Uh, why Tim? Why Tim Bosch? I don't understand how that fight got made, but for Tim Bosch, three words: don't count out. Never count out Tim Bosch. He's very tough. I counted him out against Yushin Okami against uh, when he fought Yushin Okami, and he proved me wrong for sure. Okay, moving on. Uh, number seven ranked Anderson Silva. Uh, Goat is back. G O A T. The greatest of all time is back. That's all I'm gonna say. You should know Anderson Silva if you're watching this podcast. Uh, number eight, eight ranked Derek Brunson. Don't charge Anderson. He he got caught in his last fight because he charged his opponent and got knocked out because of it. So do not charge Anderson. If you charge Anderson, it's going to be very rough. You have to do this in under 13 seconds. Holly Holm uh, changed career direction. She she had a she's 
after knocking out Ronda Rousey, she's kind of been on a losing streak. She's lost two fights, one against Valentina Shevchenko and one against uh, Misha Tate. Jermaine Duran, man, big win possible. If she can get a victory, ah, I'm over 10 minutes. I didn't do it. Oh, well, I'm going to go ahead anyway. Big win possible. If she can beat Holly Holm, it, it will certainly be a vi big victory for her and will launch her into superstardom, I believe. So, yeah, I try to hustle through that. I try to make it as condensed as possible. So if you, if you want more information, watch my last podcast. I'm really happy with this. I'm going to keep on doing this. I love the way this, I love, I love doing this in just three words. I love that little challenge. It's just a great way of condensing all the information. So anyway, leave a like, uh, subscribe.